Hello, Peter. Good to see okay, you again. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just posting a picture of my little setup here with your name, so on Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I know. It's it's kind of cool how we interact with each other with all the stuff, you know? Yes. It's I agree. amazing. It's amazing. And thank you once again for your uh generosity. It means a lot to us. Uh I've been really sick myself. Oh really? So I know what it's like. Yeah, I'm a cancer survivor. Oh, okay. Twenty five oh. years. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. Are you feeling okay? I feel great. I'm 25 years later. I'm still rocking. 25. Yeah. I know. That's what I think about him, too. You know, they they gave him less than 1% chance of survival. And it's, you know, a year later. And, uh, you know, you just can never tell, you know. But, uh, you know, I want to welcome you again, once again, to World Exposure with Shared Dial. And we are with Peter Calandra from New York City. And uh, you are a composer, arranger for Broadway musicals, producer, teacher, and a photographer. And I wanted to say, <laughs> on a side note, uh, let's see. You are a boater, a runner, uh, not really a fan of Billy Joel, which is, I found that kind of uh, surprising. Well, I don't know if I'm a boater. And I, I wouldn't say that I, don't, I dislike Billy Joel, but I would just say that I don't really listen to too much of his music. Really? Although I did enjoy him singing uh, the Star Spangled Banner at the Mets game, even though I'm a Yankees fan. Uh, I that saw really that, great. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that. And um, today I saw on your Facebook that you are a juicer. Oh, yeah. My wife and I, we we have juice every day. We make it every morning. That's great. What What's your favorite juice? Uh, just green vegetable juice. We make really? about a half gallon every day and we drink it. You know, throughout the morning. Yeah, now, I've never, uh, that I can remember, been up to the Catskills, but I know you talk about it a lot. You have a lot of pictures from up there. And do you have a home up there? Yes, we have a cottage on uh, the southeast corner uh, of the Catskill uh, State Park, and actually one border of our property uh, is up against the, the park. So, oh. um, yeah, it's interesting. There's a stream at the end of our property, and on the other side of the stream is where... The, the state park starts so it's really um it's really a great great place to have i go up we go up there a lot in the summer and the fall spring not as much in the fall because it's hunting season and we don't really want to be around that much during yeah. hunting season but uh the rest of the, those other two times the spring and the summer it's really great it's got to be relaxing does it inspire you to write some of your compositions uh yes i actually have a, a, a studio space up there uh, it's not it's not anything elaborate but it's a separate space from the house and um, my solo CD excuse me my solo CD Ashokan Memories was completely composed up there uh, inspired by um, different places in the in the area that I'd loved sure can you can you tell us a little bit about um, just about the Catskills and the inspiration what is it like there because I mean when I hear the Catskills I think of like um, I think of like maybe back in the 60s where people went to vacation and it was relaxing and soothing and people know each other in little towns. Is it like point like Catskills that? Catskills was an incredibly popular uh, resort area in the 50s and 60s and early 70s. And then um, probably as airflare became cheaper, mm -hmm. people started going other places and the Catskills fell into a fairly depressed mm. area and there I don't think there are any of the old resorts that are still open even though the physical remains of some of them are still there yeah. uh, there's this place called the Neville that closed maybe five or ten years ago and uh, the, the space is still there and they were trying to get a casino in there and that didn't work out but um, it's it's it, so what's now happened is that over the past five or six years as people start getting priced out of the Hamptons for a summer oh, Hamptons, summer place, yeah. right? And also, it's 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 a zoo trying to get out there because there's only a, one road really that goes to the Hamptons. I mean, it's like every time I look, there's just something else going on with you. And I know you were talking about your scoring um, for the Kennedy Center Honors for the Lena Horn. Oh, actually, uh, right. So there are 
six honorees this year. Mm -hmm. There's Cicely Tyson. Mm -hmm. There's George Lucas. There's the Eagles. Uh, there is Carol King. Uh, there's Seji Ozawa, and there's Rita Moreno. Oh, so, Rita Moreno, that's uh, right. So the, she's Lena I've, Horn. What am I talking about? I'm well, sorry. She might, she, might have, she might have been a past honoree. I don't know. But, I'm at uh, Rita Moreno. I'm sorry. That's all right. So I, I've worked on um, the the uh, Seji Ozawa film, and I've been working on uh, the uh, Rita Moreno uh, film, and I'm working on it today, actually. Um, so. And I'm going to be working on the George Lucas film and uh, adding some bits to the Carol King film. Uh, but the Eagles film is going to be all their music. And another production company is doing the Cicely Tyson. And uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's really, the films are really cool. They're like four minute, um, su the sum up of the person's life. Uh, and there's, yes. some great, there's some great footage in the Rita Moreno film. And she's really uh, and him, a very important figure in... Um, Latin American community. Oh. So now for something like this, um, do they come to you or do you seek out them for doing these projects? Um, well, I think the way that this one worked was that they hired, the, the Kennedy Center hired a, a team to produce the event mm -hmm. and the team hired out filmmakers to produce these films and the filmmakers hired me out. And now, is composing something that just has come naturally to you since you were a child, or is it something that, you know, over time you became better at? Both. Yeah. So what I would say is that I've always been able to sit at the piano and improvise music from scratch. Mm. And I had trouble when I was younger trying to... Uh, capture the essence of those improvisations when I would write them out on music paper. So I know how to read and write music on paper, right? But it always seemed to me that writing notes down on manuscript paper was getting in the way of the creative flow. Yeah, isn't it crazy, like you say, over the last 20 years, how you can do everything on your computer that you would yeah. never be able to do before? Right, so in order for me to do what I'm doing now, um, I would have needed uh, um, a whole team of th things, you know, a yeah. studio, I'd have to hire out tons of musicians, I'd have to have a contractor, there'd be, you know, a conductor, all sorts of stuff. And I still do that, and it's oftentimes I, I like doing that, but just to get stuff sounding great, I can do that in my apartment now. And yeah. Do. Stay put, more to come. World Exposure with Cher Dial will be right back. Hi, I'm John Maravillas, and if you're looking to get fit and improve your health, it's as easy as three simple steps. 60% nutrition, 40% working out, and 100% commitment. That's Fit for Life. What makes Fit for Life different? We specialize in getting your metabolism higher, even when you're not working out. Through our scientific and time-tested techniques, we've integrated a 30-minute workout that gives you the benefit of multiple hour sessions. Unlike other fitness studios, we combine strength training to tone, cardio to burn off fat from your stomach and hips, and nutrition planning and consulting to accelerate your results and make them permanent. Hi, I'm Allison. I took the Fit for Life Challenge and lost 65 pounds. And I'm Christy. I did too, and I lost 100 pounds. I back my promise of unparalleled fitness with an unconditional 90-day money-back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied with your results, you don't pay a dime. Call me today and I get fit for life. We're back. And now more world exposure with Cher Dial. First Lights. Now, how is this different from your last release? Well, I would say that this album is more evolved musically. Um, and that whilst the piano is my main voice on the uh, album in terms of uh, melody playing and everything, the album is more about the compositions and having the piano fit into the compositions rather than having the compositions feature the piano. You no, know, I think that's what I think that's the beauty of your music is that you know you can just listen and you can just relax and it takes you to another place. Well, that's very my much the way it does to me. Anyways, well, 
Think about my whole music career. A huge portion of it has been playing music for Broadway shows, which basically the music is in service of telling the story of the show mm -hmm. and scoring films where the music helps to tell the story. Life, but what, what do you think you would be doing if it wasn't music? What other profession do you like? Well, one year in college, uh, I didn't want to play in bar bands, so I drove a taxi in Manhattan for eight months. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't so much fun. And then I worked at a factory for a few weeks, and then uh, making, punching out the holes in seatbelt covers, uh, <laughs> seatbelt, seat belt, yeah, covers for airplanes. And then I had a job working as a night watchman. Oh. Uh, at, at, a at a marina, which was really actually kind of a good job because I used to sleep, sneak my electric piano into the booth and I could practice through two or three hours a night uh -huh. in between my rounds. I, I don't really know what I would do if I wasn't a, mu if I was yeah. a, if I was a musician. I have really no other interests. Sure, sure. But doing those life. things, you know, I mean, that's part of life doing other things, you know? And I yes. think that's really cool. <laughs> you know, you're always so interesting to talk to. Yeah. And you're always so fun to talk to. And like I said, you're just like a, a musical genius. That's how I describe you. A I musical genius. I'd say I'm, clev I'm clever. No, 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 no. You, you're more than clever. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, this. Uh, of course, your first Lights album, fans can go to iTunes iTunes, Amazon, and CD Baby. Okay. And. Um, Okay, my website is petecalandramusic.com. Oh, okay. www.petecalandramusic.com. And I'm on Facebook. You can find me there. Twitter. I have a YouTube page where I post videos um, and content, as well as a SoundCloud page, uh, which I keep as sort of a live blog of my musical endeavors. Yeah, and check out the video, Night City, with the beautiful pictures. Well, gosh, enjoy your day, Peter. All right, thank you so much again. I appreciate it. Yeah, I do too, and I hope we can talk again soon, and thank you again for everything. Okay, you have a great day. Okay, you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Peter Calandra, New York City musician, composer, and you're watching World Exposure with Cher Dial. hair transformation and hair tranquility begin at Hair Trinity. Hair Trinity Salon located in New Brighton offers you elegant, sophisticated and business stylings to crazy sexy cool. Provided by certified stylists that help you create your own style in your image because one style doesn't fit all. Affordably priced for all hair and types. Hair Trinity Salon located at 1437 Silver Lake Road in New Brighton. Hi! Hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. Uh, I just, uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining us today. No, thanks so much. Uh, the the pleasure is mine. And sorry to keep you waiting and going back and forth with this. Oh, but, that's okay. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't get the whole band together. It's a Thursday evening. People are still at work. So oh, that's um, fine. it's just unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's fine. That's fine. And uh, I just wanted to mention that you are a rock band out of Dubai, and you are Point of View. And, uh, you know, I've been actually following you for, like, over a year now, I think it's been. <laughs> I'm actually pretty flattered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's been great. and uh, But due to everything, I'm so glad we could... Um, you know, get together. So maybe you could tell us a little bit uh, real quick about Dubai, because it's just, you know, like over here in the States, Dubai is, you know, thought of like just extravagant all over and, you know, stars and everything. What is it really like over there? <laughs> you should come down and see it for yourself. Oh, yes. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Bob just said. He goes, I would love to go down, go to Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when we, uh, I, I do understand that in, in the American media, 
it is said that you should not be traveling anywhere in the Middle East. And even when Ron came down, he was uh, sorry, Ron Bumble Futhal when he came down, he was a little. He was told by the American media not to go down, but surprisingly and uh, ironically, uh, Dubai is probably the safest place on earth right now. Mm. I don't know why. But uh, you know, you could take a walk on the street at 2 a.m. in the morning and 5 a.m. and nobody would touch you or trouble you. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I think it's 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 also because uh, at the end of the day, it is still a kingdom, although it's very liberal, awesome. and uh, any kind of uh, any kind of uh, wrong attention that you attract can directly result in your status as a residence in this country. Mm. So uh, people are a lot more careful. Uh, people do realize that they're here to make money and to probably pay off bills and support families back home uh -huh. so nobody wants to nobody wants to get involved in uh, stuff which is not necessary what does uae i know what it stands for but maybe some people don't know what uae stands for <laughs> okay uae stands just like usa stands for united states of america uae stands for the united arab emirates because okay. there are seven there are seven emirates in this country, just like seven states, which comprise the United Arab Emirates, and Dubai is one of the emirates. Now, I know you just got back from Bike Week, uh, we were talking, yeah. and now is that a festival that you play every year? Well, Bike Week is a great platform for local talent to start with, uh, because local talent actually gets to play on a concert-sized stage, with great backline, with great care, and uh, the bike peak itself sees more than four to five thousand people over two days, uh, which is probably the right audience for rock and roll. Yes, because most of them are bikers, so it just makes sense for any band to be on that lineup. Would you like to tell us how your band met? Because you guys are very, very successful over there. And so, uh, I just want to know how you guys met and how long is this band with these particular musicians together? Uh, I think success is a very relative term. It's a very subjective term. Uh, we still don't make enough money from music, to be honest. Uh -huh. uh, whatever little we make, uh, it doesn't make sense to keep it, so we give it away to Animal Well. So I met uh, most of these guys back in 2003 as friends mm -hmm. we tried to play together we we've had numerous lineup changes but i think uh, the recent lineup has been around for the last two or three years out of which uh, me the drummer me and the drummer are founder members uh, but yeah this lineup is pretty much uh, there to stay so yeah i mean you know meeting people here is uh, also the other problem that we face in this country is that uh, the longevity of a band Mm -hmm. is always a challenge in this country because the moment you lose a job or you lose your job you cannot stay in the country anymore you know, you know what's very odd because i was looking on facebook and you know how you look at people's friends and you right. and me have a mutual friend from india that i interviewed like three years ago who's months, that months tdt the downtrodden yeah, yeah. Months, yeah, months, months, yeah. Moons was taking care of us on the Bangalore leg of our India tour with Bumblefoot. <laughs> Don't you think that's kind of odd that I interviewed him like three years ago and that you know him? That's pretty strange. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's odd because anywhere in the world you go, you're going to find an Indian over there. And I want to talk a little bit about your songwriting and your style of music because you are described as rock and hard rock yet some of your songs are like kind of like love songs almost the song unreal yep tell us about that are you the main writer or do everybody help in the process okay. uh, under ideal situations we would have loved to meet up every day and write songs mm. but thanks to the fact that we are sitting in Dubai, everybody's got their schedules and their lives to take care of. Because of which, there's always one guy in the band who does all the dirty work. Yes. And that happens to be most truly Nick. Nick. So, yeah, I, I love writing. I've been writing for a very long time. 
and uh, basically most of the in fact all the songs on the album first album were written by me composed by me mm. and then i took it to the band so it's something that uh, i i don't take days to write a song i really finish a song in in a couple of hours and then i just uh, do a little mp3 file and mail it across to roy dun the guitar player and then he works out some parts and sends it back so we keep uh, bumping it through till we meet for practice we meet for practice every saturday before i forget you asked me about unreal so let me quickly give you one line about unreal uh well it was a song i i basically wrote uh, just for fun it was never meant to be on the album because it was too it was too mushy to be on a hard rock album but uh, i think uh, like every rock band has that one ballad yes. on the album that put in the spotlight uh, we kind of decided the melody is nice why not work a little on it and come up with something interesting and still keep it on the album so it's like one of those songs that came out of the album and pretty much did what it was supposed to do do you what other uh, type of music do you like What do you listen to? Uh okay. So I'm 41 years old. Mm-hmm. So I've obviously <laughs> I've grown up listening to Nat King Cole, to Harry Belafonte, to uh Nana Muscuri, to Ingrid Bertrampetin, to Neil Diamond. Yeah, wow. Uh, for some yeah, for this Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, that's something I grew up listening to. And uh, I think what happened was uh I completely missed the 70s for some odd reason it was not my thing. Uh-huh. But I am a 80s glam rock child. So I am the kind of guy who's completely hooked on to everything from Def Leppard to Cinderella to 1927 to White Snake to White Lion. Wow, to- yes, exactly. Yeah. All those. <laughs> well, yeah, and I wanted to talk uh before we get going here soon about uh Ron Bumblefoot. with Guns N' Roses and maybe you could tell us your connection with with Ron. Okay, so this is a question I've answered like a million times because nobody can believe uh believe why a guy from a band like Guns N' Roses would come and support or endorse an unknown band sitting in the middle of a desert <laughs> for no good reason. Uh everybody asked me this question saying how much money did you pay him to do this? Did you sleep with him? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, because uh, the the problem is uh nobody believes uh, in the current I don't know for for some reason the current generation everything is very money driven everything yeah. is very uh, give and take there's nothing like giving without expecting. And with Ron that's exactly what happened means uh, they came out to play a show at uh, in Abu Dhabi with Guns N' Roses. and uh, the one guy that stood out in that band for me uh, without slash being around was ron and uh, i'm typically not the fan boy kind of guy okay. but i still happened to send a message on his uh, on his facebook and he wrote back instantly saying hey what's up and great stuff good to hear from you and yeah we should we will come back blah 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 so i initially thought it somebody just writing to me taking the piss out of me I mean, why would somebody like ron sit and answer all his messages on facebook Uh-huh. And this kind of went on for a couple of months. The media asked me about my band, and uh, he wanted to hear our music. And I was really, really apprehensive about sharing anything that I was doing because it was not yet ready, it was not yet copyrighted. But then I said, you know what, hell, I'm not going to be a millionaire with this music, so let me might as well share it. What the harm? What if it really is Ron Bumble for that? And you know that's just what makes the world so um, amazing. I mean, like I'm talking to you here, you're in Dubai, I'm here in Minneapolis. You meet people from all around the world unexpectedly, and it brings people together. And I think that's so cool. And I know, uh, I know that you do a lot of charity work. You're great supporters of autism, and then you also had a charity to help the earthquake victims of Nepal. Yes. So that's yes. very very uh nice. It's it helps I'm sure to have uh you know be part of a charity. Yeah, I mean people. I think 
I I think uh, if your music cannot do anything good for anybody, then it's not worth it. Sure, and it gives you a a voice to be able to you know work on um, your causes. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, where are you playing around Dubai? Are you, do you ever leave the country? Oh, this is our mascot. Oh, this is our little mascot. (laughs) We are world exposure here. And so we, uh, his little mascot, Mini P here, and he brings us questions from fans all around the world. And they, uh, they like to just know different things about you. And this is a question a fan asked if you could be any superhero who would it be and why <laughs> a superhero hmm. you um, look like a superhero <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't know man I'm, I'm not into superheroes but if I had to be one uh, I don't know maybe just Superman I guess because anybody who I think he's the guy who's got everything yeah you know he, He's got super vision, he's got super strength, he's got super everything. I'm sure he shreds as fast as well. (laughs) And, you know, he's got everything in one, except for the fact that he wears his underwear outside his pants. Yeah, that's the only uh, problem. (laughs) The only Uh, problem, but I'll I'll, I'll never do with that. (laughs) So you you said you're working on your next EP? Is it an EP? Okay. It's a a full, full album, 11 songs. Okay, and when when do you expect that to be released? Uh, good question. <laughs> we should be done by Feb, I'm guessing. I'm sorry. We should be done. We should be done by February 2016. Oh, okay, that's great. And now, do you have a um a lot of fans? Do you, uh fans that come out to see you when you play these big places? Is it easy for them to come out and see you? Well, to be honest, uh, Dubai is a kind of place which uh, doesn't really have such a huge fan base for any band. Mm. I mean, it's always going to be it's always going to be twenty, thirty people who really love you, and the rest are going to be people who come to the gig because their friends are coming. Uh, to the gig. Well, thank you, Nick. I definitely will, and we'll keep in touch. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great thank evening. You. Thanks for the appointment. You're thank welcome. You, thank you. You're a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank Hey everybody, this is Nick from Point of View and Dubai and you are watching Web Exposure with the lovely Shirdai. Rocking the World with L.A. Nick A traveling aficionado A professional entertainment personality a goodwill ambassador, an entrepreneur, an author, a creator, the ultimate scenester, the people's politician, the mayor of nightlife. Watch L.A. Nick as he chronicles his adventures right here on World Exposure. Hair trends, hair transformation, and hair tranquility begin at Hair Trinity. Hair Trinity Salon, located in New Brighton, offers you elegant, sophisticated, and business stylings to crazy, sexy, cool. Provided by certified stylists that help you create your own style in your image because one style doesn't fit all. Affordably priced for all hair and types. Hair Trinity Salon, located at 1437 Silver Lake Road in New Brighton. 